I had said uh, previously in a video that Debbie Wasserman Schultz is in Hillary Clinton's pocket and um, people have been calling for debates as far back for additional debates I'm sorry from as far back as uh, August of 2015 uh, I'm gonna uh, play for you a, a clip of uh, a radio show hosted by uh, Mr. I believe it's uh, Tom um, I think it's Tom Hartman and um, he had Martin O'Malley uh, on his broadcast and uh, O'Malley made uh, valid points as far as at that time uh, September 18th the Republicans had already had two debates and the Democratic Party had had none so I'm gonna play the clip so that uh, you can hear what he was saying it's party malpractice in my opinion and I've expressed that with the chair who I respect but I, I think there's an instinct within the uh, establishment of, of political parties there's a, there's a tendency to calcify and to <clears throat> Um, kind of circle the wagons uh, to fall back on old relationships instead of appreciating the truth that the American people are always looking for for new leadership to move us forward. Um, and the Republicans have now had two different rounds of debates. And let's not forget they have uh, they have the uh, they they get two whacks of the apple. They have some of their the candidates on their B team go first, and then they have the candidates on their so-called A team go second. And that's a lot of unanswered falsehoods that the that people tune into. And we can't blame the American people. They're doing the responsible thing. They're trying to follow this debate and discern and figure out who's going to lead us forward after President Obama. But if they turned into the Republican debate, they would have heard a totally fictitious and false version of these last eight years. They would have heard not one discussion about how we get wages to go up as a country again, which is the main issue that's on the kitchen table of families all across our country. How do we get our economy to work again for all of us? So I believe our party should be having more debates and Debbie Wasserman Schultz should focus on, on running an offense for this party instead of circling the wagons in a, in a defense. We should be having more debates. These Republican debates should not be going unanswered by us. Now, in 2008, when uh, Hillary Clinton was running against Barack Obama, at that point, she wanted more debates. Now, all of a sudden, she doesn't. So you tell me what this, the deal is. In my opinion, because uh, Obama was running in front of her, you know, all of a sudden, now she wants to get out and, uh, and have more debates. But now, because she's the front runner, she wants to limit the access of the other uh, Democratic candidates uh, to the debate stage. So anyway, I want to play this video clip, um, which uh, supports uh, my statement. The DNC, as you know, is saying that if you or Governor O'Malley participate in any non-sanctioned debate, then you don't get to participate in the official ones. They are restricting the number and of I debates. Think, and I think that that is dead wrong, and I have let uh, the leadership of the Democrats know that. Again, I think this country benefits, all people benefits, democracy benefits when we have debates, and I want to see more of them. Democratic candidates were invited to a televised debate here in Wisconsin. Hillary Clinton has said yes, Barack Obama has it. Obama rally in Waukesha, a handful of Clinton supporters called for a debate. While inside the Expo Center, Obama's campaign defends their decision. They point out that Obama and Clinton have already debated 18 times, with two more scheduled in the coming weeks. I think that at a time when so many of our people have given up on the political process, when 80% of young people did not vote in the last election, 63% of all Americans did not vote. I think debates are a good thing. I love debates, I've done it all my life. So I would like to see more debates. Now, this uh, conversation between, I guess, Wolf Blitzer and um, uh, Hillary Clinton uh, took place on uh, September the 17th, 2015, and it was at this point that she danced around uh, 
the subject of uh, more debate. So let me play this particular clip. But it's clear that she was not in favor of more debates. I know, I know your time is uh, limited. Uh, a quick question. Are you ready to uh, tell Democrats, indeed the American public today, that you're ready to accept more Democratic presidential debates than already scheduled? You're under pressure to do so. Well, Wolf, I have said from the very beginning, I look forward to debating. I look forward to the debate, uh, you know, next month, uh, you know, now just a, a month away. And I will certainly show up anywhere the Democratic uh, National Committee uh, tells us to show up, because I want us to have a good exchange of ideas and to make sure that Democratic voters first and then general voters uh, uh, to follow, see exactly what we stand for and what our positions are. So, you know, I, I am... Uh, ready and uh, willing, uh, no matter uh, what uh, uh, they decide, to uh, show up and be there. Uh, are you ready to ask the DNC to authorize more Democratic presidential debates? That's up to them. They can, you know, they made their decision, but I have made it clear that uh, if they want to do more, I'm happy to do them. Clearly, you're influential, though, with the DNC, and if you want more debates, I'm sure they, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the chair of the DNC, uh, would, would go ahead. Uh... See, so, you know, she danced around this, but Debbie Wasserman Schultz was heavily invested in her campaign in 2008, and she's just as heavily invested in Clinton's campaign in uh, 2016. But she's trying to give the illusion that uh, she's going to be even-handed with all the candidates, which is a bunch of uh, crap. So I'm going to go to uh, the uh, next uh, video clip, which uh, shows uh, the people uh, heckling uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and screaming for more debates, and she basically dismissing them. children using a vile and disgusting term. We are going to have a debate again right here in New Hampshire in December. I'm ready to debate with you. Just the other day at a campaign event in Rochester, Trump was at it again. One of his supporters in the audience called President Obama a Muslim. My friends, what's more important, drawing a contrast with Republicans or arguing about Debbie clearly uh, wasn't listening to the uh, her audience, and she clearly dismissed them as far as uh, saying, "What do we want more debates or to um, counter uh, the uh, Republican uh, agenda?" And clearly, how do you counter the Republican agenda uh, unless you ha basically have more debates so people can see you counter the Republican agenda? But anyway, I'm going to jump to uh, the next clip where uh, it. The uh, assistant chair, I believe her name is uh, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, basically calls Debbie Wasserman Schultz a liar as far as uh, having any kind of discussion with the uh, DNC leadership regarding the uh, number of debates. Now, this clip is uh, from uh, Andrea Mitchell's uh, show, uh, which occurred on October the 13th, where uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, basically uh, calls uh, Debbie Schultz a liar as far as uh, uh, indicating that she was not disinvited uh, to uh, the, uh, the debates. Democratic Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz earlier this hour joining me here in Las Vegas. Now Hawaii Congresswoman and Democratic Vice Chair Tulsi Gabbard joins me. Uh, Congresswoman, what happened here? Uh, she says that it's not the case that you were not told you couldn't come, that she simply wanted you to stop discussing the debate structure and discuss the issues. 
good morning, Andrea, and aloha from Hawaii. Uh, I, I, I can't say much more than to say that that's just not true. You know, I was on your network, MSNBC, talking on Meet the Press Daily about how we do need more debates, the same thing that I've been saying now for several weeks, and the very next day I got a message saying that if I'm going to continue talking about that, that I shouldn't go to the debate. Uh, it's not surprising to me that she is saying things that aren't true. Uh, about a month ago, shortly after I called for more debates, the chairwoman said publicly that she had communicated and consulted with vice chairs and officers of the DNC prior to making her decision both about the number of debates as well as this retribution policy of, of the exclusivity clause of punishing our presidential candidates if they participate in any other debate outside of the six sanction debates. The fact is there was no communication, there was no consultation uh, with the vice chairs and officers of which I am one. So uh, it's unfortunate that um, she continues to say things that aren't true, but what I'd like to focus on is the issue of democracy, the issue of freedom of speech, which is really the core principle here in my call for more debates and in my call to get rid of this retribution policy that punishes these very serious presidential candidates from going out and engaging the American people across the country in different forums and different debates uh, if they do so outside of the six DNC sanctioned debates. Congresswoman, do you think that she wants to limit the number of debates because she's trying to favor Hillary Clinton over her less well-known challengers? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to speculate as to what her motives were again. All I can say is that I and other officers were not included in that conversation prior to the chairwoman unilaterally making the decision to limit debates to six and to punish those who step outside of those lines and talk to communities and participate in debates that are so-called unsanctioned by the DNC. I think it's wrong and I think it doesn't represent the democratic values that our party should be standing for. Can you continue to work as a vice chair of this party in this situation? You've just called her a liar for all well, intents and purposes. Oh, I, I'm, you know, I, I know who I work for. I work for Democrats across the country, and I'm doing my best just to do my job to represent the views of people, of Democrats, who are saying, hey, look, we want more conversation. We want more debates. And that's really what, what is at stake here. Um, you know, I, I had a chance yesterday to spend some time at, here in Hawaii at the Punchbowl National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific where I looked out over this lawn where thousands of our nation's sons and daughters are laid to rest who literally sacrificed their lives for freedom of speech, for democracy, for this great process that we have. So these are principles that I take very seriously and principles I think that should be continued to be upheld, that we should encourage this engagement, we should call for more debates, uh, and allow for the American people to have more access and more information before they make the very important decision of who our Commander-in-Chief should be leading us going forward. Congresswoman Tossi. Now, she basically just uh, told it the way it is. So, now, uh, now Debbie Wasserman Schultz, has been refusing more debates, and as late as January 13th, she continued to uh, refuse to have more debates. I'm going to cut to the next clip uh, to uh, show you a confirmation of that fact. Okay, here's a, a further interview with uh, Wilt Blitzer, where she confirms uh, that as uh, late as January the 13th, she does not want to have any more debates. the race for the White House, the Democratic uh, presidential contest. Right now, uh, a, a new Quinnipiac University poll shows Senator Bernie Sanders now leading Hillary Clinton in Iowa, uh, 49 to 44 percent. Another poll from CBS News and the New York Times shows Bernie Sanders closing the gap with Hillary Clinton nationally. He's down just seven points right now compared to 20 point gap last month. We're seeing both of these candidates step up their attacks against each other. Is there time, and you're the chair of the DNC, to approve more debates between these two candidates? You know, our candidates uh, with our debate schedule and our schedule of other candidate forums have had a large variety of opportunities to be seen by voters. Uh, you can see uh, from whether it's Secretary Clinton or Senator Sanders, uh, to, to some degree Martin O'Malley, um, their exposure to, through a variety of those opportunities has given them the ability to be successful and to attract attention and to build support. 
Uh, that's with the schedule that we've had. I want to point out, uh, Wolf, that uh, 58 of the uh, 61 debates in 2008 and 2012 actually had lower you know, or as good of as we've had in the debates that we've had now. We've actually exceeded viewership by a lot of the, with the debates we've had this year compared to 58 of 61 debates in 2008 and 2012. And in fact, our candidate with the least amount of time on our debate stage that has actually had as much time as the front runner uh, in, on the Republican side has had. So I'm very confident and satisfied with the amount of time our candidates have had on the debate stage, through candidate forums, and importantly, through being able to get up close and personal in those early state primaries, which is really important. So just see now she's full of shit because she, these debates have uh, occurred on the weekends, on Saturdays, Sundays. Uh, uh, I think there was only been one, maybe two, that have occurred uh, during the weekend prime time. Everything else has been out of prime time and basically inconvenient for most people to watch. Can you imagine uh, the numbers that they would have run if they had had all of their debates in prime time? They would have blown all of the previous debate numbers uh, totally away, and they possibly might have been in the vicinity of uh, some of the uh, Republican uh, uh, candidate debates. But uh, she's basically trying to hide behind numbers. So uh, I'm going to let this uh, particular clip uh, finish out, and then I'm going to uh, jump to uh, the clip that really shows that she's full of crap. Be precise, no additional debates are being authorized. We have six debates, and we are proceeding with that schedule. Debbie Wasserman Schultz is the congressman from Florida, the chair of the DNC. Thanks very much, uh, Congressman, for All right, and uh, here is uh, MSNBC uh, announcing that now, like magic, since Clinton over the past week is talking about having more debates, magically now there are going to be uh, three to four additional debates with the um, next Democratic debate uh, being Thursday of this week before the uh, New Hampshire primary. We will start first with that breaking news, though, that we told you about the announcement of four additional Democratic debates. The first of those four debates is going to be right here on MSNBC this coming Thursday night. Now, right now, Hillary Clinton is in a tight race in Iowa against Bernie Sanders, 45-42. That is in the Des Moines Register poll known as the Gold Standard poll just out in the last 24 hours. In New Hampshire, though, Bernie Sanders enjoys a clear lead over Hillary Clinton. That's why that new debate now that will take place just before New Hampshire could be critical to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Bernie Sanders is set to hold the first of his four events in Iowa today, and MSNBC's Casey Hunt is at his Iowa headquarters live in Des Moines. Casey, thanks for joining us. So let's start with this news. There was a bit of a standoff here over the last week with Hillary saying she wants some more debates with some conditions, Bernie saying he wants more debates with some conditions. How did they arrive at this final compromise here? Who gave in on what? Do we know? <laughs> well, at this point, Steve, um, what we know is that the Sanders campaign had been extraordinarily frustrated uh, with the back and forth with the Clinton campaign over this question of more debates. They really feel like they were very unhappy with the DNC earlier. They didn't. There weren't enough debates scheduled right off the bat. And the ones that were scheduled were not in prime time. They were on weekends. Uh, and they felt that it was designed basically to limit their exposure, limit, limit, limit Bernie Sanders' chance to get in front of the American people. Now, of course, the dynamics of the race have changed dramatically over the course of the last six months. All of a sudden, you have Senator Sanders within striking distance of Clinton here in Iowa, just two points uh, in some polls away within the margin of error for the most part. And now they feel like the Clinton campaign, or they have felt like the Clinton campaign was trying to change the rules on them to benefit her. There's been a lot of uh, discussion of whether or not she has looked come out of these debates looking better, looking stronger. We remember that first Democratic debate where he essentially dismissed her emails. That was considered a good moment 
moment for her. The question being whether it gave her an opportunity to seem bigger, more presidential, uh, and they felt as though all of a sudden, now the Clinton campaign uh, wanted additional debates, uh, but on their terms only. So uh, there, of course, was an extended back and forth about this, questions about where those debates should be held, and questions privately about whether each side was negotiating in good faith. And now